here's an overview of what we're going to cover in this webinar. You're going to have a very brief introduction to the Big Data Network, Phase 2, and the Urban Big Data Centre. And then uh, Mark and Shiva are going to talk about the integrated multimedia city data that they've been collecting. So this consists of a number of data strands, a survey, GPS and life logging devices, image analysis, textual media data and multimedia data. And at the end, there's going to be time for questions. So just to say that all attendees are muted, so we can't hear you. If you do have a question, then you can type it in the question box at any point in the webinar. Um, if you can't see what box I'm talking about, if you look to the top right of your screen, you should see an arrow, a red arrow. And if you click on that arrow, you should be able to see where to, to type your questions in. So there's going to be no time to answer the questions actually during the webinar. Uh, the talk's going to be about 30 minutes long, um, but then there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end. Okay, so this is the third of three research webinars that have been given by researchers from the Big Data Network Phase 2. So what is this Big Data Network Phase 2? Um, the ESRC has invested in three business and local government data research centres. The BLG, which is based at the University of Essex, the CDRC, Consumer Data Research Centre at Leeds and UCL, and the Urban Big Data Centre and our speakers today are from the UBDC. So the three research centres aim to make data that's routinely collected by business and local government organisations accessible for research purposes and this is to benefit both the data owners and society as well as researchers and in such a way that individuals' identities are safeguarded. And Big Data Network support. Um, the UK data service is funded by the ESRC to support and coordinate activities between these three centres. So our aim is to unify data discovery across the, the three data collections, to encourage sharing of information and expertise across the centres, and to coordinate user training and capacity building for researchers using their data. Okay, so that's all from me. I'm now going to hand over to Mark, who's going to start the main part of the presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Sarah. So hopefully you can all see my screen now. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, just to uh, start with, let me just introduce my co-presenter, uh, Shiwa Nowitzka, who, who's the research fellow here. Shiwa? Hello. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to batter on because we've got quite a lot to cover. Um, <clears throat> Um, just uh, I, I, what I want to do is just say a little bit, very briefly, about the Urban Big Data Centre. Um, to some extent, um, some of that's uh, already been said uh, by Sarah. But, but essentially, our centre, uh, which is funded for a five years period, um, is the, the aim of the centre is to bring together and link data from a wide variety of sources, um, um, local governments uh, and business. A data particularly is the aim, um, <clears throat> although uh, we've got wider sets of data than that. Um, and the idea of bringing these data together and linking them together is, <clears throat> is that we provide new and innovative data sets uh, for a wide range of people, not just academics but also policymakers, but as much as possible uh, to the general public as well. Um, but not only are we sort of bringing these data together and, and creating these data sets for other people to use, we, have, we do um, a, a number of other things, like we do a lot of education work around big data, about working with big data, um, and we have a remit in, in that way. We also hope to facilitate people in terms of new methods, uh, and we hope to be at the cutting edge of, of new methodologies as well, and we hope to facilitate others in, in those, uh, that, those areas. Okay, so, so let, let me just uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Integrated Multimedia City Data Project, uh, as it's called, um, uh, or IMCD as I'll refer to it from now on, um, or as a colleague of ours calls it, the IMACD project. Um, this is a, essentially this was a, a project that was funded by the ESRC as a way of kick-starting the, the data held by the Urban Big Data Centre. 
Um, it, it, it's always been run slightly separate from the Urban Big Data Centre, um, and, and um, uh, I, I'll come on and t tell you a little bit about that in a second. It, it's a collaboration across the university, but not just our university, but other universities. There are uh, colleagues in uh, Newcastle and uh, Sheffield who work with us. Um, <clears throat> but we have within uh, the university, we've got people who are working uh, in urban studies, in transport in particular. Uh, we have two teams in computer science who've worked with us, the, uh, the infor information retrieval uh, teams. And then we have a team from education who have a specific adult uh, learning uh, remit. Um, so we've, um, we've collaborated quite uh, quite widely for, uh, across the university. The Urban Big Data Centre has wider collaborations than that and, and includes other uh, people as well. Okay, so let's get to the meat of um, the IMCD. Uh, the, main, um, the main thing I would say is there are five, um, five real main strands for the IMCD uh, uh, data. Uh, but, but they tend to hang around the household survey. So th th this is the, the core part of this was a, a random representative a survey um, of people in the, uh, the wider Glasgow uh, area. And by that I mean the sort of urban a uh, metropolitan area of Glasgow. It's commonly known as the Glasgow Clyde Valley Planning Area. Um, a, as I say, it's a random representative household survey. It includes all the a, adults in the household. A, and and it, it's unique in that it's got a, a unique combination of modules. Um, but really, um, the uniqueness of the, the project is more in the combination of these five data strands. Um, so as part of, a, um, as part of this a project, we've collected um, data a, from a sample of the household survey, a, which included carrying uh, GPS a, sensors uh, and, and life logging sensors. I, I won't go into that too much a, because she was going to talk about that in more detail. Um, just to say, life loggers are, are wearable cameras, really, although they collect wider information than that. Um, the, the, a, the other two the other main parts of the survey are we have a, a, a textual media data retrieval project and essentially they crawl the data they crawl the website uh, downloading data about Glasgow um, from a, a number of websites we're talking over a hundred websites um, a websites like social media websites like um, a, like Twitter Foursquare and other a social media, but also news websites, BBC, but also papers, uh, but we collect data on weather uh, and a number of other things. Um, and then we also collect from, a similar, from similar websites, we collect multimedia data, uh, mostly images, uh, again, downloading and, and connecting uh, information from Glasgow. And finally, and a little bit tangentially, we have a also um, a essentially bought a, um, a mixture of satellite data and LIDAR data. Um, satellite data, uh, we bought stereo pairs to, to allow us to build um, uh, 3D models um, that can be used for other research purposes. Um, for those who don't know, LIDAR data is, is essentially uh, very similar to, to 3D um, um, data. It's, it's created by airplanes uh, essentially passing backwards and forth across a, an area, uh, bouncing um, uh, lasers off the ground and and, um, and building up a 3D pattern, a very very accurate 3D pattern of a, of a, of a, of, a, of the city. Okay, so so um, just I, I'm going to talk a little bit. Move on. I'm going to talk a little bit about the survey, and then I'll hand over to Shiva to talk about. Uh, the other parts of uh, the project. Um, so, as I said, this is a, a household survey. Um, we targeted uh, a or wanted 1,500 households, um, and we expected to get somewhere between a from those 1,500 households, we expected to get around about 17, a 17 
hundred to two thousand, three thousand people. So a and that, that that's a range of sixty to one hundred percent. So we weren't expecting to get one hundred percent. Probably closer to the sixty percent, if we're honest. Um, coverage, as I have said before, is the Glasgow Clyde Valley planning area. Um, so the survey has main has modules a has main modules on um, travel and transport. Um, it also we also collect data on sustainability. So uh, we collect data on on green behaviour um, and a uh, green um, attitudes. Uh, we also collect information about ICT uh, use, uh, um, and we also have a, a large module on education on, and learning. And one of the uh, unusual things about the educational and learning uh, uh, part is that we collect information um, a, a, about knowledge. So, so we, we, with every every single part of the survey, we try to to collect data that that was data on attitudes to that area. Uh, we try to look at behaviours in the area and also look at knowledge. So we could look at people, what people's reported attitudes were, you know, what were their behaviours and how did they look, what do they look like and compared to their attitudes, but also knowledge. So we asked, we asked a number of very um, innovative questions that, that look at people's uh, understanding of, of the area. Okay. Um, also, in, in the survey, we uh, so that was the core of the survey, but but also quite a large number of the questions uh, are more typical um, uh, survey questions that you get in in surveys like the Scottish Household Survey uh, and a number of of national surveys. So we had large demographic sections. We've got asked questions about people's neighbourhood and their communities. We asked some questions about where they lived before they moved to the area they're in now. We had a small module on health questions. We asked uh, information about people's employment and previous employment. We have quite a significant amount on income. And we have a small section really about people's cultural and, and civil engagement. Um, just, th just to give you, a, these are two of the more unusual questions that we have. So this first one is really uh, an example of, of one of the knowledge questions, or one of the questions designed to try and get to understanding. So essentially, it's a calculation. So people are asked a question, um, a, and and then asked to give an answer. A, a, but it requires them actually to work out the the answer. Um, and the, another example of a rather unusual question was, uh, does your household have any pet dogs? Um, and the reason for asking this, we were requested, could we put this in the survey, is because a, there are a number of a, researchers in public health think that, that the ownership of a pet dog might be a contributor to a better health. And so we included this in the, a, the, our questions. Um, just very briefly to finish, uh, we were in the field, the survey was in the field from the 15th of April uh, to the 21st of November in 2015. And we actually achieved 15, uh, 1,508 households. Um, that's 51% of the people who were approached uh, accepted. Um, but 30% uh, of households, uh, of those sampled, refused to take part. Uh, but of those that did agree to, of the households that agreed to take part, we got 2,095 people uh, uh, took part. Uh, excuse the spelling mistake. So that's 74 percent of all eligible adults, and uh, so that's about 1.4 adults per household uh, compared to uh, the 1.9 adults per household in the census. Um, and the data uh, is um, at local authority level. And that should be available uh, quite widely soon. So you should be able to get that data uh, uh, fairly soon. Okay, and now I'm going to hand over to Shiva. So hello. So one of the strands from IMCD project was the sensor survey. And in the sensor survey, as Mark said, we asked people to carry tiny GPS devices and wearable cameras. GPS device collects information about your location every five seconds 
And the wearable camera, it takes photos every five seconds, but not only photos. It can also take information about how fast you accelerate, about it can detect light, it can detect brightness, and a few other, few other things. So before we started the sensor survey, we had to first choose a proper device. And as we wanted to make it really easy for people, we didn't want them to spend much time on charging the device and learning how to deal with it. Therefore, we chose a device that was not only cheap for us, but also the best for the uh, potential users to use it. Uh, also with the sensor project, apart from the GPS device and the sensor, uh, sir, uh, the GPS device and the light logger, we asked people for some ground truth data. So we needed something to verify what, the, what sort of data was collected uh, via GPS uh, device and light logger. So we asked people to fill their activity diary where they told us what they did on the first day of their survey. So to be able to um, proceed with the data collection, we needed first to design systems and hire researchers who would deliver trackers to all the people who agreed to take part in it. So we had a system in which we were able to manage when and where people are getting the devices. And once we collected the devices from the people, we could put all the data into our LiveLog memory server where we could visualize the data and see what we have there. So, some statistics. So, from this 295 people who took part in the survey, we got 90%, so almost 12, 20% of people who decided to carry either one or two devices for us. And we thought it was a fantastic achievement according to previous, to previous studies. Here you can see how the differences between male and female and people who were carrying both devices and one. And the quite important thing is also that the average age of respondents for the sensor survey was a little bit lower than the average age for the uh, household survey. So as we may think younger people are more into technology and were more willing to help us with it. So, having the data from GPS trajectories and life loggers, we were able to combine it. So, not only to see where the individuals were going, but also what these people saw. So, to be able to enrich this information in some more, in, like this data in some more information, we had to first process GPS data. So we had to clean it because there are some crazy outliers. At one point is in Glasgow, the next one will be in Iceland if you lose uh, the GPS signal. Then we had to segment trajectories. So we had to divide them into not, like, homogeneous segments, so movement and non-movement. From this point, we identified stops. So we knew where the person stopped. Knowing where the person stopped, we could add additional information to this. So we could try to identify where is the home of a person, school, work, dentist, etc. So having all this information and classified data, as you can see on the map here, we covered quite a lot of Glasgow with the detailed movement patterns of all our participants. And then imagine that from all these people, so it was 403 people who carried GPS device, 265 of them carried also life logger, that what gave us in total an opportunity to create not only something like Google did with street view that we can see what's going on on the streets, but also like a street view inside of your house, inside of your office, so we can analyze what was going on constantly and like everywhere, not only on the street. So because as you could see on this data, uh, we could see on the data that GPS is quite, um, it could be quite intrusive, the data that you get from it could be quite intrusive and it could easily give us information about all your locations. I was wondering whether I was wondering whether you know what techniques could be used to protect privacy with GPS. 
And I would like to show you now a movie that we uh, animation that Glasgow School of Art prepared for us, showing movement of men and women in Glasgow within one week. Sorry for the colors, it's blue for boys or for men and pink for women. And to answer what you said, that you can blur the data, you can obscure star and endpoint, restrict access to the data or leave out of the strip names on the map, we can do all of it. So in our data set, we first, what we did, we obscure start and end point on the map, but we can blur the data. There are various methods to anonymize trajectories to protect individuals, uh, individuals' privacy. And the data set you can see here, we can distinguish different patterns of women and men during the week. And you can see that on Sunday, women spend quite a lot of time on shopping in the city yeah. center. <laughs> So the next part, uh, the next strand of the data, uh, the next strand of the IMCD is the textual media data and multimedia data retrieval. These slides uh, we got from our colleagues from Terrier Team, so thank you uh, to them for these. And I will try to tell you as much as possible on it, even though I haven't done it. <laughs> so. Uh, I won't be talking about all the um, data they, the team collected, but I will focus on three main types and we'll show you later the analysis that are possible with this data. So we collected Twitter data and we've collected uh, more than 65 million tweets in between July 2014 and November 2015. Within this number, we also uh, collected some geolocated tweets and tweets that uh, were created by certain users like BBC West Scotland, Police Scotland, uh, Glasgow City Council, etc. And also tweets from certain, for certain topics like certain hashtags. So like Glasgow, Glasgow 2014, Glasgow 2015, Glasgow Buchanan Street, etc. And I, and here you can see just the tweets mapped in Glasgow taken from Eric Fisher map. So these are all geotag tweets in Glasgow. And I was wondering whether you know what is the percentage of tweets in our sample that are geotagged. There are a few people who had it right. Quite the poll says that quite a, many of you said that it's 10%. So we had less than 1%. Less than 1% of all the tweets were geotagged. So still from 665 millions, it's still quite a lot to analyze. Another um, like, tiny strand of data within the uh, Terrier team uh, project was the weather data. So we, were getting we are getting information on Glasgow weather. So these are hourly information about temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind direction, etc. And this data is collected at the same, it covers the uh, similar time as uh, Twitter and the survey. Next uh, strand was connected with transportation data. So we got some static data about cycle routes from uh, Glasgow City Council. We have also railway stops and railway stop names, locations and identifiers from NACTAN database. And also, to make it more real time, we have a daily data feed on timings of passengers' trains. So it's a, a real-time feed about the train delays. So the Terrier team, to allow people to analyze this different difficult sometimes to get by individuals data set, they created something called Urban Data Dashboard. And this data dashboard is uh, restricted by IP address. So you have to like apply to uh, UBDC to be able to get access and then you have to do it for a particular research project. So then it can be validated whether you can get the access or not. But what they did, they created a few like data services inside. So it's social media where you can analyze different uh, terms and different tweets and try to detect different events on Twitter. Also, there is a part that allows you on analyzing transportation and the weather. So I'll focus quickly on the transportation data. So you can get the information about the different times, uh, different like train delays according to different days. 
you can also visualize your own uh, GPS trace that can be also classified so you know excuse me where the person was walking driving taking the bus etc so you can analyze this all this data then we can try to combine the information from train delays and all the transportation analysis with Twitter data to find out what people thought about all these things. So from the data we've collected, we know that there was a huge peak in delays on the 1st of July. And then we analyzed the Twitter for the unhappiness about the Twitter, about uh, public transport and commuting. And we still got the same peak on the 1st. So I thought, hmm, there must be some like weird correlation in it. Do I have the weather? Uh, sorry. Oh, I think I lost one slide, but there was a third one saying, uh, showing the weather in, uh, weather in Glasgow. And on the same day, on the 1st of July, it was the only warm day in Glasgow. It was 26 degrees. Therefore, people were showing their comments on that it's the, it's hot people can't stand standing in the in the in the trains that the country can't cope with the weather etc etc so what i wanted to show via this slide is that you can do a like proper analysis and proper investigation by combining these different data strands and i think that's it i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for your attention